So I think I'm having a bit of a moment today. Hi everybody and welcome back to Built Not Bought Campers Workshop. Following on from the roof rack build that we've done, we're going to be fitting a light bar today. So, I suppose I need to show you where we're going to put it. The light bar is going to go at the front, on the roof rack. And to put it on the roof rack, we're going to be using one of these bars that we've already cut. It's already been painted. All I need to do is drill the holes and show you how we're going to mount it on the roof. I have noticed where the roof rack actually sits. There's a bulge in the centre of the roof, so it leaves a gap at each end of the bars. So what we need to do is raise that up slightly. We can raise that up by using the fixings. And if I just show you again, it rocks. So the fixing on here, I'll just put a nut on and raise it up a little bit. Right, so these are the Unistrut fixings. We have some normal nuts. We also have the lock nuts, which I've put on there as well. We don't want it coming loose. A couple of washers on there. And you've got the big flat space washers. Might use them. I don't know if I'm going to use this lot yet, but they're there. I've drilled the holes. Got the spanner, got all the fixings. So let's get back on the roof again. Oh, do you remember in one of my other videos? Up on the roof. Right, I'll concentrate on this side so you can see how I put it together. I'm saying that like I know what I'm gonna do. To be honest with you, I ain't got a clue. Just winging this one. Right, let's bring you in a bit closer. Right, so these sit inside these channels. You twist them and they will lock into place at some point. I need this as close to the front as possible because it's gonna be for a light bar. So what I'm going to do, right at that point there, I'm going to use a square spacer on top, and then I'm going to use a normal nut. I know what you're thinking, these bolts are rather long. Well, I will be cutting them down with an angle grinder, which is all built. And on the roof, it'll be a lot easier. And then I'll get them cut down to the perfect length that I need. substituted the washers for another square washer plate. 
And instead of learning lock, instead of using lock washers, I'm using no, instead of using lock nuts, I'm going to use normal nuts because they've got a lower profile, and I can cut the bolt down a lot further. Instead of using lock nuts, we're going to use some thread locker. We need to get it out of the box first and have a good look at it. Don't need them, that's for something else. So, we have all the fixings, the wiring loom, and we have a lovely light bar itself. Right, so today, we're gonna get that up on there. Ooh, that's looking good. Look at that. So now we've established it's gonna look good, let's figure out how to fit it up there. So these have got provisions to be able to screw that way or that way. Since we've got enough room on the roof rack up there, I'm going to have ours facing this way. So I can attach these first and then bolt it into the roof rack. Notice if you see when I put the bolt in the hole, there is no way on this earth I'm going to get a socket in there. And just to prove it to you, no way. I could use smaller bolts, but these fit the holes perfect and they also fit the Unistrut stuff. So, what I did was I got a couple of bolts with an angle grinder and a cutting disc. I cut a slot in the top for a screwdriver.
Right, so there's the wire. It's got to go through the roof. And what I've done with the wiring loom, I've fed it up. I've taken off the handle off the inside, pulled down this rubber, pulled down the roof lining. And what I've done is I've pulled away this plastic bit down here and fed it behind, this is where the cup holder is, along here. It's fed down through there and it's gone under the dash and behind, I know you can't see this very well, I'll shine a light on it. I've fed it behind the shroud there where all the heat controls are and it goes around to the passenger side. So let me take you around the passenger side and show you. So the wiring loom comes out through the back of the shroud there and just drop down here for now. Because the battery's inside, I could run it down under the floor into the battery, but I didn't want to do that. What I've done is I've cut the fuse holder and the battery terminals off the end of the wire. So I'm just left with two bare wires. So I need to find somewhere to earth that. And I made a really big boo-boo by taking off that um, earth terminal. I've got a little bit ahead of myself because I'm gonna feed it up here and come out. Let's take this out. Come out by the fuse here. There's a perfect earth there. So I should probably just connect that back up and put some heat shrink on it. Right, so what I've done is, I have found a fuse with a multimeter that is a permanent live. Now, the permanent live here is just in here. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna be using a thing called a piggyback fuse, which is one of these. Right, so this, it's what you call a piggyback fuse. Great little items. So what happens is, you take your fuse out, and whichever one you want to use a live from, I needed a permanent live um, when the engine is off. So I found that one with my multimeter. So the wire comes through here into one fuse holder. Now the one that lines up with the fuse holder will be the fuse that you will be the one you're piggybacking off of and the front one will be the original fuse so it's a 30 amp fuse in the original fuse so that goes in the front and i took the fuse out of the fuse holder which funny enough is also a 30 amp and that goes in the back one so when i plug this back into the fuse holder just here And don't panic people, it's a plastic shroud on that so it won't short out. <clears throat> we now have two feeds coming off for that one fuse holder. But by each item will be fused separately. <clears throat> so I didn't film taking the shroud off and everything and feeding the wire through. I think you should get the gist of it. Right, so what I need to do now is put that earth cable back on and also put a terminal on that will plug into that, which is a bullet connector. Right, so what I've done is, if I can pull this back up through. So I connected that earth up that I cut and I'll connect it to a nice big bolt. It's attached to the chassis there. I've connected a bullet connector on the end of the live, cover that with a heat shrink as well, just like I did the earth, and that's attached to the piggyback fuse. I'm leaving that unplugged at the moment because now I'm going to go on the roof, drill the hole in the roof, and feed the wire through a rubber grommet. So I think I'm having a bit of a moment today, telling you how I was going to drill the hole, what I was drilling it with, and then about painting it afterwards to stop it rusting, clearing the swarf off the roof to stop it rusting and I never switched the camera on. So yes, having a moment. As you see, it's been painted with silver paint and it's actually the same color that the vehicle is painted in. Because I bought some touch-up paint and some spray cans in the color because we've got some other work to do on the vehicle. Anyway. 
I'm not too sure if I video this bit, but I'll tell you anyway. I've put the grommet on the wire. It's just a simple rubber grommet, which I drilled a very small hole through and forced it on there. I'm going to put some silicon sealant around the edge where it slots into the onto the van, and I'm going to fill the centre of the grommet up with silic with um, Sikaflex oil, not silicon. It's Sikaflex that I'll be using, and then we will poke it down through the hole. Um, I'm going to put connectors on the end of that first. I haven't got no spade connectors, so I'm going to have to cut the wires off the other end and put the bullet connectors I've got. Um, so yeah, I just again. Another moment, didn't get everything that I needed. Right, so I've plugged in the lights, and damn, they are well bright, even in the daytime. So let's have a look. Do you know, I looked at that and all I've got is spots in my eyes. Right, so now we know it works. I'm going to switch it off and going to tuck away all the wiring, cable tie it all up and put it back in place. Let me show you where it's widening over here. So there you go, there's your piggyback fuse. So if you ever want to add anything to your vehicle, and you don't want to go direct to the battery, you can go via the fuse box by using the piggyback fuse. Great bit of kit. Got any questions on that? Leave them below in the comment section. If you've got anything uh, you need to know about them, just ask and I will tell you. But I got, I got that off another YouTube channel and I didn't even know they existed until then. So what I'm going to do now is fill that with Sikaflex. So there you go. 
the grommets in, we've got a little bit of sticker flex around it. And worse comes worse, if we stick a bit more sticker flex around the top of that, which to be honest with you, I think I will do. Just to be safe. Right, <clears throat> we've got to let that dry and seal. And now we can start putting things back together. First of all, let's tuck the wall around there. install a light bar on a Renault Traffic. Leave your comments below, let me know what you think, let me know if you'd have done it differently, if you like the way I've done it, if there's anything you're not happy with, please tell me. But whatever you do, please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up, leave me comments, I'd love to hear what people say about things I do here. And also, make sure you stay safe, make sure you stay well, make sure you stay happy, and bye for now.